The next thing that we need to do is implement our stop button. Remember, whenever the user taps start, it should then turn into a stop button and the timer should stop as well. So there's really two steps in there. First, the button, and second, the timer. Let's do the easier of the two first, stopping the timer. To do this, we're going to save a reference to the set interval that we created earlier. We're going to say this dot interval equals set interval. If the user taps the button while the interval is running, we're going to clear the interval. We do that by calling the clear interval function. So we'll put it at the top here and we'll call it clear interval. Now clear interval is a JavaScript function that we can call at any time. It sits on Windows scope, so we don't, uh, although we don't have it defined in this file, it is available to us. We pass to clear interval a interval ID. Now, whenever we call set interval, it returns an interval ID, which we're going to save as this.interval. This interval ID is always a number, and it ranges anywhere from, say, like 12 to 37 to 97. It's just a number, and it just keeps track of the running set intervals that our application is currently running. Now, we don't want to clear our interval if the timer hasn't started yet. So we need to wrap this in a function or excuse me, a if statement. And this if statement needs to somehow ask the question, is the timer running? So if the timer is currently running, then we want to stop it, and we stop it by calling clear interval, right? Yeah, that makes sense. So we now need some way of d being able to figure out whether or not the timer is currently running. Well, to do that, we're just going to add another property to our state object. So back up at the top, we're going to go to get initial state and we'll add another property called just running. And by default, it'll be false, which means by default, no, the timer is not running. Now that we have this default property, we'll come down to our set state down here and we will change it to true whenever we are inside of the interval and we actually are running the timer. So now the kind of the project flow or the app flow works like this. When the component is first rendered, running is false. The timer is not running at all. When the user first taps the button the first time, we're going to set running to true. We can now use that flag to figure out what we should do when the user taps the button. So we'll say if this.state.running is true, then we want to clear the interval. We want to change running to false. And we want to return. We want to return right now because we don't want to run any of this other code. It would just make the timer start right back up again. So we will make sure to return uh, explicitly here. Remember, we always use set state, not this.state.running equals false. By calling this.setState.running equals um, this.state, excuse me, this.setState with running is false, we're updating state in the way that it's meant to be updated. So let's go ahead and save this and give it a shot. And then we should be able to click start, and sure enough, the timer stops right there. Fantastic. That's exactly what we wanted. The second thing we need to do is to change the value of start to stop once the timer is running. We'll do that by using the running state again. And we'll do that inside of our start stop button area. Here we go, right here. So by default, right now, the text inside of the button is always start. We need to somehow intelligently update it from start to stop. Well, it's going to be pretty, pretty straightforward now that we have that running flag. We're going to reference a JavaScript variable here, which means we're going to use our curly braces since we're inside of JSX, and we'll say this.state.running. And then we're going to use what's called a JavaScript ternary expression. Let's write it out first, and then we'll talk about what's going on. So we'll say this.state.running, a space, and then a question mark, and then stop, then a colon, and then start. Make sure you've got spaces around the exclamation and the colon as well. So a JavaScript ternary expression, just in case you've never used it, 
works like so. First, the first term is, is evaluated. If this expression is truthful, it will return the first argument, the first thing after the exclamation, or excuse me, the question mark. If this expression right here is falsy, it will instead return whatever is after the colon. So this layout that we've got here makes sense, right? If we are currently running, we're going to return stop. If we're not running, we're going to return start. Cool. So let's go ahead and save this and give it a go. So you can see that start went to stop, sure enough. Exactly what we wanted. OK. The next thing we need to do is update the style on the border here. And we're going to do that by dynamically choosing which style to push into the style tag. Right now, it always goes to styles.start button, but let's determine that on the fly. We'll add a new variable at the top of our start stop button here called just style. And we'll say this.state.running. If it is, we'll return styles.start. Uh, styles.stop button. That's a tongue twister. Otherwise, oh, I forgot my space there. We'll do a colon styles.start button. So this is another ternary expression. If the state is currently running, that means we want to show the stop button. But if it's not, we want to show the start button. We'll replace our styles.start button here with just style. And then the last thing that we need to do is make up a style for our stop button at the bottom of our file. So let's go down to the style sheet at the bottom, at the bottom, excuse me, and we'll add stop button. And we're just going to provide a border color. And this border color will just be uh, red, which will be pound CC, and then 0000. zero, zero, zero. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. We'll click stop, excuse me, we'll click start. It goes to stop. A lot of just very similar words in this section here. You'll notice that we get the red border here, and then we can click stop. Timer, start, timer goes away, and the button goes back to start. Fantastic, exactly what we wanted. So I feel like I've misspoken a couple times here just because of all these very similar words. So let's do one last run through of what we've changed here. The goal of this section was to make sure that the timer stopped whenever we clicked the start button after it already started running. We did this by adding another state variable called running. If running is true, then we will an additional tap on the start button here will stop the timer and change the button back to the start mode. To make this happen, whenever we render the component with running equal to true, a tap on the button will clear the interval that updates the timer. It'll change running back to false. It will update the style from a stop button to a start button and it will update the text from stop to start. OK, so a lot of tongue twisters here. The main takeaway from all of this is to really take note of the fact of how we're using state within our component here. We use state to somehow make updates, to react to user input. We're using it to, depending on the, on the definition of state, depending on what the current value of our state is, we're returning a component that looks and behaves differently. So with that in mind, let's continue on to the next section.